What's good, everybody? Welcome to V's Game Chat, my weekly news show. Let's dive right into it with Fallout 4 Next Gen. It's not on PS Plus Extra. The Fallout 4 Next Gen update released yesterday for all platforms on April 25th. PC saw a smaller update, which included stability updates and Creation Club add-ons. That's about it. Everyone's PC mods were also completely broken. Everybody expected that is soon as this dropped on PC, everybody knew their mods were going to break. The one mod that people are really upset about is the Fallout 4 physics mod. So the game's animations are locked to the frame rate. So if you're going above 60 FPS, your game is going to start running at higher speeds. Like you're gonna run really fast, your movements are gonna be really, really quick. And the game's supposed to be locked at 60, but if you wanted to play above 60, you would have to use the physics mod to unlock the frame rate and keep the physics in check. Now for me, I tried playing it on PC and it didn't lock at 60 FPS and it did run at super high speeds and it also crashed a lot and locked up my PC. So I went with the next gen update on PS5. But before we jump into the fact that it's not on PS Plus Extra, let's explain what the next gen update is. This update on PS5 and Xbox Series X has received a visual upgrade. The update makes the game look like the PC version on Ultra basically. There is a quality mode targeting 4K at 30 FPS and a performance mode with dynamic resolution scaling targeting 60 FPS. However, here's the problem. If you are playing Fallout 4 on PS Plus Extra specifically and do not personally own the game, you have to pay $20 to own a copy of Fallout 4 and play the update for now. This is not the case on Xbox Game Pass. Now, Bethesda has tweeted, we've seen some confusion regarding the free Fallout 4 Next Gen update for PlayStation Plus Extra members. The Fallout 4 Next Gen update will be available to PlayStation Plus Extra members through the PlayStation Game Catalog. Your patience is appreciated while the teams work on this. Hopefully, this is resolved soon, but at the moment, if you're on PS Plus Extra, you're gonna have to fork over the cash to play the next-gen update. I don't know how this happened. Huge oversight. On the bright side of everything, Fallout 76 has broke its own peak player count records at an all-time high of 73,368 concurrent players as of April 21st. I personally still haven't played Fallout 76. I might, maybe, one day, I don't know, but that's dope that these games are getting love. But people are trying to rewrite history saying the Fallout 76 was always good, but we all know in the past, people were very upset with Fallout 76, but from what I understand, it's like a totally different game. Part of this next story is a bit delicate and we're gonna treat it delicately. So Stellar Blade has received two different controversies. Stellar Blade is a new character action game like DMC and Nier Automata, which has had a lot of controversy surrounding the game. Aside from that though, the game has seen a lot of praise for being a great game at a Metacritic score of 82 and most reviewers recommending the game. Aside from reviews though, a lot of people think that the main character is too hot and unrealistic and are bothered by her overly attractive characteristics, to put it lightly. Now, the developers have already said that they don't want to be censored and that they feel they should not have to tone down the character and have leaned into it with certain in-game outfits. However, here the delicate topic. This game has come under fire for a graffiti found on the wall looking like it says something very offensive. Now keep in mind, this is a Korean developer and in their culture, this most likely means nothing. But the wall says hard with a sign R next to it looking like it says hard R. Now, Sony has responded to this and this is what they said. The placement of two graphics near each other instead of a blade re resulted in an unintentional, objectionable phrase, said PlayStation statement. Shift Up had no intentions of creating offensive artwork and will be replacing the graffiti for the day one patch. Now again, I do genuinely believe that this was an accident. I don't think they meant it. In their culture, it probably means nothing, but in American culture, it does mean something. It was most likely a mistake and they've already changed it and fixed it. I think that's all a positive outcome. Let's jump into the quick bits. Golden Axe is receiving a animated show on Comedy Central. I used to love Golden Axe as a kid, so I love this idea. To anyone interested, Sea of Thieves has hit 40 million players. That's great. I didn't know that the game was as popular as it is. That's awesome. Indie World shows off many indie games that look worth your time like i'm super interested in anton blast now into in my opinion the biggest story of the episode embracer group a swedish gaming company who owns many studios has decided to split into three companies embracer has been doing many things to cut costs due to debt issues like at least 1400 layoffs seven studio shutdowns and over 20 games canceled and still financially seems to suffer now the way they're going to be breaking it up is they're going to become three different companies they will become asmodee group coffee Stain and Friends and Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends. Asmodee will be tabletop game publisher, Coffee Stain 
Arcade and Friends, Indies, A and AA games along with free to play games on all platforms. Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends is AAA games, developer and publisher for all Lords of the Rings and for some reason Tomb Raider games. This was a really interesting move on their part and to be honest some of the company names are really silly but hopefully they can try to pull themselves out of this hole. They have some amazing IPs and very talented studios but it doesn't seem like anything's going to get better anytime soon. Valerian Studios reveals two upcoming titles. Developers of Baldur's Gate 3 are currently working on two new titles which have not been named. Swen posted that they are very excited about what they are working on and wishes they could show the world now. Now he said and I quote, I don't know if we're going to pull it off but looking at our narrative, visual and gameplay plans, I think what we're working on now will be our best work ever. I get excited like a little kid watching the key imagery, want to show it to everyone now and grumble in frustration at having to wait until it's actually all working. Yes, it's hype, but it's hype because it really looks and feels good. That sounds awesome. I love seeing passion in game developers when they really love what they're doing. And it's not just making a game to profit, like they're doing something that they're passionate about. I love seeing it. That's my favorite part of gaming is when they're in it. They want to do it. They want to make sure it's the best they possibly can and not just cut a check. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I have not played Baldur's Gate 3 or any Larian games, but I really would love to give them a try. It just keeps getting pushed back in my backlog, but I do plan on hopping in quite soon. But anyway, guys, that's been V's Game Chat. If you enjoyed the video, definitely slap a like on it. It helps out a ton more than you know. Pushes me on the algorithm. And also, if you wouldn't mind just subscribing, I'm so close to 1,400 subscribers. If we could hit 15, that'd be awesome too, but 14 is the goal right now. Anyway, have a good one. Peace out.